Good morning. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad we're all here together on this Lord's Day. Everyone is welcome here, and we're glad to greet you this morning. If you are a first-time guest with us, uh, there is a little card. I have a sample here uh, in the pew rack that we would uh, request you fill out and feel very, very welcome to come back again. Uh, we do also want to welcome our families at home who join us by way of our DVDs and those who will be joining us on our website. If you will, please, uh, if you'll take the yellow insert and look at some of the coming events in the life of our church. Uh, our evening circle will be meeting tomorrow evening. I understand the meeting is here at the church. Okay. Uh, they, they like new members, women only, but they truly do like new members. However, the men can participate in our Beth Moore Bible study, which is continuing. It's not too late to, to start that. Uh, we have the same session on uh, Tuesday evening and then repeat it again on Wednesday morning. You have a flyer in your bulletin about the barbecue luncheon uh, next Sunday, uh, the proceeds of which will support our Coalition Against Poverty in Suffolk that we uh, most usually refer to as CAPS. Uh, I invite you to participate in that. And um, this is also our week to host the uh, free community dinner, and we do need some helpers for that. The uh, good part about helping is you get to eat what Chef Deb fixes, so that's gonna be a treat in itself. So please come out uh, about 3.30 or so in the, on Friday afternoon, meet some of our local friends that we uh, have fed now for a number of months. It's a wonderful outreach ministry here. At this time, I'm gonna talk about the uh, yard sale uh, during the mission moment, uh, but please note that as well. At this time, I would like to ask uh, Deacon Curtis Johnson and Ms. Peterson if they would come up. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you, Michael. Uh, last Sunday, uh, each one of you heard Michael announce that we have a, a new ch church secretary. This is Amy Peterson. And today, I have the great privilege of welcoming Amy and her family to be here with us. And her husband and her son, uh, Dave and Andrew, were sitting in the balcony with us today. And we are indeed blessed to have this family present with us, and we hope that this is the beginning of a long-lasting relationship here at Suffolk Christian Church. At this time, would each one of you give Amy some applause to welcome her to this church? And I would say that when we had a meeting with Amy just before she started work, she's been here one week, and we made comment that her tenure would have to be a minimum of 30 years. <laughs> and she noted when she left on Friday to Michael that she had 29 years and 51 weeks to go. <laughs> but who's keeping track? But thank you, Amy. We appreciate you being here with us. And welcome to Suffolk Christian Church. Please stop by the church office, give uh, Amy a call, and, and give your own welcome. We're delighted that uh, she and her family are part of our, our extended church staff. We are blessed today with the flowers on the altar given in memory of Molly Cox Lauder, given by her sister, Nita Bagnell. And we thank her for sharing the flowers with us. And as you are able, I invite you to stand as we sing, Christ is made the sure foundation.
throughout God's world this day, Christian churches are celebrating communion as one family. Our sisters and brothers in Africa, Europe, South America, Asia, and in all lands and countries join us in lifting the bread of life and the cup of salvation. In Christ's love, there is no east, no west, no north, no south, but only one spirit of hope, love, and peace for all. Praise, Praise be to Christ, Christ our Savior. Savior. Amen. <laughs> confess our faith. We believe there's one God whose nature is love, revealed in one Lord Jesus Christ by one Holy Spirit of grace. We believe the authenticity, genuineness, and inspiration of the Holy Scriptures that both the Old and New Testaments contain the revealed will of God, and that the Bible is the supreme written authority in all matters of faith and conduct. We believe that Jesus is the Son of the living God. He came in the flesh, died for our sins, was buried and rose again on the third day according to the Scriptures. We believe that holiness and true happiness are inseparably connected and that believers should do that which is right and strive to maintain order and practice good works, for these things are good and profitable to all people.
Thank you. Please be seated. I uh, made the comment earlier, and I would not really want to hear too many amens when I say this, that it wouldn't be a normal Sunday if I didn't uh, make a big mistake in the bulletin, and I did. Uh, Abigail will be with us next Sunday, and so that gives me an opportunity to talk to you about this coming Saturday and our yard sale. Uh, you may recall we had a very successful yard sale, had a lot of things left over, but we need more donations, and you may bring them uh, to the church uh, any time this week uh, between the hours of 9 and 5, which is our normal uh, office hours. Uh, please look around, uh, get some things that you think would be of interest to someone else. You know, yard sale, I just trade mine for yours, and you take his and he takes hers and all that uh, but it is a very uh, fun time and certainly in supporting our Haiti uh, mission trips next week you will hear from uh, Abigail and her uh, absolute commitment to leading these trips uh, she just can't wait to, to come back and this morning in the early service uh, we had one of our regulars coming uh, a lady who is Haitian and uh, so she said to a rather large group of people as we were standing around talking that her goal is to get me in Haiti. Well, uh, <laughs> and I think she has enough determination to do it. So if I can do it, I know that many, many others of you can as well. But thank you for supporting the Haiti missions this way, this week. Uh, you may have heard that they had suffered an earthquake uh, yesterday, perhaps yesterday afternoon, but we understand that it did not affect any of the supply and multiply mission in the town of uh, Maui there. So keep praying for our friends in Haiti. And thank you for your ongoing support of all of our missions and ministries. We're walking by faith, and we thank you for your support. Let us honor God with our tithes and our offerings.
us pray. Gracious, Gracious God, God, accept these gifts, and with them our lives. May both the gifts and our lives be used in your service. This we pray through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Please take your weekly prayer guide with you when you leave today and put it in a place. Uh, the, the best place, I think, in it, most people's houses is on the refrigerator door. That's something we visit at least once or ten times a day. And then it will remind you of all of these who have asked us to pray for them. I uh, will give you a quick update on uh, Charles Johnson. He is hopefully going to go into rehab at a nursing facility tomorrow and we will continue to pray for uh, Charles and Audrey and for their family. I uh, mentioned the, hur the earthquake in Haiti and we also had experienced an earthquake in Indonesia. And while we're praying for uh, places around the world, our friends and fellow citizens in Puerto Rico still need our prayers as they and our friends in North and South Carolina recover from their storms. Let us pray. Our gracious and loving Heavenly Father, we lift up, we praise your holy name as we come to you on this day to give you thanks for all things and to express our love and appreciation to you for calling us to be in fellowship with you and with our own community of faith. Lord, we rejoice in this sense of belonging to each other. We're grateful and yet we're humble for all the opportunities that you give us to learn and to practice justice, equality, and compassion for all people. Our Father, we are thankful for your love and your grace that sustains us every single day. Lord, we look around us at our world and we are troubled and concerned. We would pray for your intervention and your guidance all over the globe, but also in our own country. We pray that you would bring an end to violence and death and suffering wherever it may be. May there be peace and safety for all. And may our leaders and officials in all levels of government govern with humility and compassion and equal treatment for all. Lord, we pray for our own needs and the needs of all of these who have asked us to pray for them. We ask that you would look down inside of us and that you would see the cares and the burdens, the hurts and the problems that we carry. We pray especially for those who are facing difficult times in their life. We pause in silence just now as we would each bring the concerns of our own heart to you. May this day bring glory and honor to your Son, Jesus Christ, as we give thanks for the forgiveness of our sins and your presence in our lives. Amen.
Our scripture lesson today is from the 13th chapter of the book of Acts. O Lord, it was you who caused all holy scripture to be written for our learning. Teach us today in the power of your Holy Spirit the truths that you would have us learn today as we pray this in the name of Christ our Savior. Amen. In the church at Antioch, there were prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Simeon called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, Manaen, who had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch, and Saul, whom we better know as Paul. While they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. So after they had fasted and prayed, they placed their hands on them and sent them off. May the Lord bless this reading of his holy word, and to his name be honor and glory. Amen. Well, there had never been a church before, and it was founded on the day of Pentecost in the uh, second chapter of the book of Acts. And this is the story of the foundation of that church. Uh, and here we are in the 13th chapter, and a dramatic new venture came upon the church. In these brief three verses, the first missionaries were sent out to proclaim the gospel of Christ. The location was the city of Antioch, which uh, I learned is the, was the third largest city in the Roman Empire, behind Rome and Alexandria, Egypt, 
Antioch was the third, located about 300 miles north of Jerusalem. And Antioch has the distinction of being the first place where the new believers were called Christians. And you'll find that in the 11th chapter of that book. Uh, some interesting people we are introduced here in this 13th chapter. First, being Barnabas. Uh, he became a very, very important person in the life of the early church. Mentioned 23 times in the book of Acts, and St. Paul mentions him five times in his own writings. He is a central uh, person and missionary of the early church. Then there was Simeon, nicknamed Niger, Niger being a Latin word name which means black. Now, did that mean that he was an African? We don't know. If so, that would be very significant in that the church started off racially integrated. And then there was Lucius of Cyrene, of whom we really don't know very much at all, and Manaean, who was brought up with Herod, who later became one of the Roman rulers. And then, of course, Saul, who we know by his Roman name, Paul. These were serious Christians. They knew they were called to serve God in whatever ways that God would call them or lead them. And in order to discern God's will for them, they practiced the ancient ritual of fasting along with their prayer. So prayer and fasting was a very common part of the early church as a means of discerning God's will. I don't know if any of you have tried fasting in your own life. Uh, there are some weight loss programs that, that incorporate a, a, a bit of fasting in it. There's several different ways that you can fast. I would suggest that you, you seek medical advice uh, before you uh, 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 alter your diet in a, in a radical way, but it may be a good way to really uh, concentrate on what it is we want to know. I, I did this some years back. I fasted for one day. I was much younger then. And the way I worked it, every time I felt a hunger pang, which as a young man was quite often, I would immediately stop, if possible, and pray right then for the object that I was praying for. Soon they heard from God. Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. The Holy Spirit that day said, go. And thus began the great missionary movement in the early church, a movement that continues to this day. Go and tell, go and love, go and serve. This is the essence of the Christian faith, to go and to do what God tells us to in 1973, I was in my last year as pastor of First Baptist Church in Ravenswood, West Virginia, and we had a relatively uh, new family in the church, the Miller family. Bob Miller was an engineer at the Kaiser Aluminum plant there in Ravenswood, and he and his wife, Alice, and their three children were very active and dedicated Christians. One day, they announced to us that they would be leaving Ravenswood to go all the way to Oregon to join a Christian retreat ministry there. We were all surprised. Bob had a very well-paying job, and this certainly would mean that they would be embarking on a journey of faith. Now, by the way, they did not want to take uh, all of, or even the most of their household goods, and I think I still have uh, two bookcases that we bought from them uh, when they left Ravenswood. Now you can imagine the discussions that their decision prompted among our church members. Well, first of all, we certainly admired them uh, and their obvious deep Christian commitment, but their decision challenged the rest of us. Uh, we wondered, is there something that we could be doing or should be doing in a similar fashion? So as I pondered their decision and to go and follow the Lord's leading, I recognized that some literally must go. 
Now, coincidentally, it was a few months after that that Carmen and I left the church there uh, due to a call from Uncle Sam who said we would like for you to be on active duty. So we went too, although that was, well, I, I can't really say it wasn't a hardship because I wasn't the one that had to live alone with two small children all that time, but uh, sometimes those are the sacrifices we make and I'm certainly glad we were able to do that. The call from God might mean sacrifice. It might mean hardship. It may mean lean times financially. It may mean leaving comfortable surroundings. And surely it means change. And I don't know about you, but as my calendar pages flip over and over and over, I tolerate change a little less than I used to. The Miller family challenged us. Was there a call from God on our lives as well? Now, in one of my more inspired moments, of which there are not that many, and, and so therefore I can remember just about every one, it came to me that not everyone needs to physically go away. We all need to go when the Spirit calls us, but our going may be right here around us. Some must go, but some must stay. Stay to serve God where they are, and uh, some then go to serve God elsewhere. And I say to you today, is God talking to you? You probably did not fast and pray this morning, but uh, that wouldn't uh, halt the Holy Spirit from coming into your heart and talking to you. Uh, we all have a vision for what God wants us to do. Uh, we have this great mission in Haiti that we participate in, and we're, we're looking forward to those who will be going later this year. They, their, need, their physical needs are great, but their spiritual needs are even greater and more urgent. And that's what connects us with all with whom we reach out. They, this is the go that we need to obey. Is everything in your life laid out? and given to God, controlled by God? Or are we still trying to live it our way, in our charge? Whether it is go or stay, serve the Lord. Our communion hymn is, What Shall I Render to the Lord? And you may remain seated.
feast of the people of God. When our risen Lord was at the table with his disciples, he instituted the sacrament of Holy Communion. Our Savior invites those who trust him to share this feast that he has prepared. Hear this from St. Paul in Ephesians chapter 2. Christ is the reason we are now at peace. He made us Jews and you who are not Jews one people. We were separated by a wall of hate that stood between us, but Christ broke down that wall. By giving his own body, Christ ended the law with its many commands and rules. His purpose was to make two groups become one in him. By doing this, he would make peace. Through the cross, Christ ended the hate between the two groups. And after they became one body, he wanted to bring them both back to God. He did this with his death on the cross. In Christ, we are one people. Come to this table in peace and harmony. Let us pray. Holy Father, it is truly right, and it, it is our greatest joy to give you thanks and praise, our eternal God and creator. You've given us life and new birth in your spirit. Once we were no people, but now we are your people. You have raised up the church as a witness to the resurrection, breathing into it your life and your power. When we go astray, you welcome us home. Always your love has been steadfast. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with the choirs of heaven and with all the faithful of every time and place who forever sing to the glory of your name. We pray this in the name of Jesus, our Savior. Amen. The Lord Jesus, on the night that he was betrayed, he took bread, he broke it, passed it to his disciples and said, This is my body given for you. Eat it in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup, he gave thanks for it, passed it to them and said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for many for the remission of your sins. When you drink this, remember me.
everyone been served? Heavenly Father, we thank you for this bread reminding us of the body of Christ given for us. In taking this, we remember his sacrifice for us, the body of Christ given for you. Our Father, we thank you for every good gift that gladdens our soul in this fruit of the vine, we remember the sacrifice Jesus made that we might have life eternal, the blood of Christ shed for you. Gracious God, may we who have received this sacrament live in the unity of your Holy Spirit, that we may show forth your gifts to all the world. We pray this in the name of Christ. Christ. 